Hello everybody and welcome to another computer build. Today I'm building another basic office type computer using AMD components as opposed to the usual Intel. At the heart of the system is a Ryzen 3 CPU with integrated graphics, a Gigabyte A320M motherboard which is an entry level motherboard. Having said that it has all the usual mods and cons including DDR4 RAM, plenty of SATA ports for expansion and a full host of video connectors as well. Storage is away of a 240GB SSD. We have 8GB of DDR4 memory from Corsair. A nice little gaming orientated keyboard with illuminated back keys etc. So nice for easy viewing. 24 inch Full HD display from ViewSonic. And an entry level Micro ATX case with expansion for future. Right, so what we're going to do is we are now preparing the basic components for the motherboard installation, CPU, uh, memory, and also the cooler as well. So we start off by putting in the CPU. AMD is a little bit different in that the special pins are on the CPU and not on the motherboard. So complete contrast to what Intel usually make on their motherboards. Got to be careful how we put this in. We can't afford to bend any of the pins, otherwise that's our CPU gone. Pretty expensive part. Secure down the retention arm on the CPU retainer to give a nice tight fit. Next we remove the installation brackets for the cooler as we put in on a Wraith cooler. Put this in place and secure down to the back plate which has been installed behind the motherboard, screwing equal tension to each screw and diagonal sequence. Next we attach the CPU power connected to the motherboard and just tidy up the cable at the same time. Next we're going to fit the RAM, it has two sockets and there are DDR4 modules. Clip those securely in place. So there you have it, that's the motherboard preparation complete. All the core components are now put on the motherboard and we are now ready to prepare the case for installation of these parts. Now it's time to prepare the case by getting rid of some of the excess cables and tidying up the cables that we need. I'm going to speed through this next part so I don't keep you too long and I'll talk you through some of the core parts. Having installed the I.O. shield at the back of the case, we now drop the motherboard into the case. There's six screws on a micro ATX board which we secure in place and then the motherboard is properly installed into the case. From here it's just a matter of connecting all the right cables and tidying up where appropriate. Some of the more budget oriented cases don't allow a lot of good room for cable management but you do what you can and you keep it as neat as possible. This generally keeps the case free for good airflow and keeps dust down to an absolute minimum long term while keeping heat down and keeping the fan noises down as well. So it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time to do this right. There's a little bit of housekeeping on the back of the case to be done in the way of cable tying just to keep everything tidy so we can put the back cover on. Here I'm installing the SSD drive in the way of storage for this computer, nice and neat and out of the way and then I'll connect the SATA power and also the SATA data cables to the drive as well and put them out of the way. This last little bit is really just cable management, making sure that everything's secured down properly, nothing can get in the way of the fan and everything is secured down. Put on the back cover, or the front cover in this case, secure it and we're pretty much done. Just going to quickly take you through the installation of Windows from start to finish. Uh, this basically involves a USB drive which has been preloaded with Windows. Uh, this is the new uh, 1903 build which has recently been supplied. Um, so this is the late, absolute latest build that is available for Windows. At this particular point you would choose the drive to which you wish to install Windows. In this case we only have one drive so it's just a case of loading it directly onto that drive. 
Uh, there's no partitions that needed to be made and there's no other drives to be selected so this is nice and easy. During this part of the installation Windows basically then restarts and starts to find drivers for all the additional parts that are connected to the motherboard. Um, so your storage devices and all the various ins and outs of the motherboard. Windows then completes the procedure and takes us through a couple of more setup options before it's ready and then it'll take you onto the desktop. This is a pretty important part of the installation where you choose a lot of the privacy settings uh, to adjust all the stuff that Microsoft knows about you from using your computer. I turn all these off by default to ensure as much privacy as possible to the client. We're almost there. Thank you very much for watching. Speak to you next time.